Let me take you back to 1996. The PlayStation was already out, but the third dimension wasn't quite mainstream yet. People were pumped to see their favorite franchises make the transition. The release of the N64 was only months away, and with it would come the game that would set the standards for 3D video games. At the same time, Sony was about to launch their first 3D platformer, Crash Bandicoot, landing the same month as Mario 64. Competition was red hot, magazines holding previews, anticipating the release of a brand new genre, the 3D platformer. But alongside these two legends, legendary titles, a third game was also being developed for the scene. That game, of course, was none other than the infamous Bubsy 3D. This game released only weeks after Mario 64 and Crash, releasing to overwhelmingly negative press. It had since gone down in history as one of the worst games ever made. I often see people compare this game to Crash and Mario 64, saying those two games were already out. They should have set higher standards. There's no reason this game should have come out in this current state. Well, you gotta keep in mind that this game was in development long before either of those games were even publicly shown. So, these poor guys over here, they thought they were doing something original that has never been done before. They thought they were inventing the 3D platformer, but oh no, here comes Crash and Mario, and they're both doing the same thing we're doing, except a lot better. There was a reasonable amount of hype behind this game. EGM held many previews for it, but they understood the bar Bubsy would have to meet. Bubsy 3D is preparing to be released into a sea of red-hot competition. Nobody expected it to live up to Crash and Mario, but nobody imagined just how badly it would crash and burn either. What we got? was a piece of poop. And despite that, they had the nerve to write these accolades on the front cover. And I know what you're thinking, the Gold X Award? What the hell is that? There's no way that's real. Um, no, it's real. That was a real thing PlayStation Extreme Magazine actually gave this game in issue 11 during the review, where they gave it a 93%. How they liked this game that much is beyond me, but I hope they found help. Anyway, the quote at the top right, however, from Electronic Gaming Monthly, there's a lot more to it. Stunning, original, Bubsy 3D climbs back to the top. Check it out. Those ellipses definitely made me raise a couple of eyebrows, so I did a lot of digging through old issues of EGM, and I actually managed to find the original quote. It's not from their review of the game, which was in issue 89. No, they all hated Bubsy 3D, ripping right into it, giving it horrible scores. This quote is instead from a preview from issue 88, before the game was even out. This right here is the exact page they took the quote from. Oh, what, you don't see it? Okay, let me help you out with that. Yeah, it was taken completely out of context, and it wasn't even taken from the actual game review. This quote is a dirty trick. It was taken from a magazine that hated this game and twisted into a vague bout of praise in order to sell this pile of garbage. So, let's play it. The game starts up with a really badly compressed FMV following the Woolies on their home planet. They announce that in lieu of their plans to steal all of Earth's wool failing, Bubsy has arrived on their home planet and is causing a ruckus. This cutscene is like five minutes long and it pretty much explains what I just said with one sentence. Bubsy crashes the meeting at the end and says a bunch of non sequiturs in a row. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Uranus! Was it something I said? What could possibly go wrong? It's like a kid who knows he's not funny, so he just fires off every joke he knows in quick succession and just hopes someone likes one of them, <laughs> like spraying bullets and hoping you hit a target. Okay, title screen. That render of Bubsy is ugly as hell. I mean, early 3D renders never look that great anyway, but there's a certain charm to them, you know? The colors weren't quite right yet, the roundness, the roughness, it's all iconic in its own way, but Bubsy's spiky fur, the bulgy eyes, the gross feet, it's just... Ugh. And okay, here we have the level select screen. It looks like there's, uh, yeah, about 18 stages total. All right, I guess this is it. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to beat this game. I'm going to beat Bubsy 3D. Wish me luck. 
Another great render in the loading screen. I think it's supposed to be him finding Bubsy 3D in a stack of CDs and being like, uh, check it out, I found a good one. But that's not even what the disc art looks like though. And here we have level one. So Bubsy starts off by telling us the ropes, I guess. Grab all the items you see. There's plenty of them in each level. And if you get enough of them, you'll be in for some surprises. God, that voice is so annoying. But yeah, anyway, you're probably thinking, yeah, duh, I know, dude, you don't need to tell me, but you gotta keep in mind, this was the first game ever like this when the guys were actually making it. So it's understandable they'd assume players wouldn't have been familiar with something like this. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. This game uses tank controls. Well, I guess Mario 64 was the first game to have full analog controls in conjunction with a moving camera, but good lord, it feels like I dropped the controller in a puddle of mud. Bubsy is so slow to react, and steering him is like, it's like driving a car that doesn't have tires. It doesn't feel right at all. Jumping is gonna make the camera look down at the ground, which really isn't as disorienting as people really make it out to be. Honestly, it does really help help make these jumps easier. The reason making jumps is so hard isn't because of this camera, it's because of the control. Bubsy feels really heavy, it's so easy to undershoot and to overshoot platforms. I kinda got a feel for it eventually, but throughout my entire playthrough, I would often have difficulty making jumps that in any other game would be incredibly simple. If it wasn't for that ledge grab move, I don't think I would've been able to get anywhere in this game. This problem extends to jumping on enemies as well, oh my god, something this simple should not be this difficult to do without taking damage. You'll mainly square off against Woolies, but there's a couple of other enemies too, each one more annoying than the last. The worst one are these, I, I think they're Cobras? Their bodies are completely see-through, so you can hardly even see them. He can't jump on them either, so you just have to run from them, and they run faster than you. And with how long it takes to turn around so you can run in the other direction, it's absolutely impossible to get away from them. A lot of times, I don't even bother turning around. I just mash the X button and try to jump away because that's the only form of movement that doesn't require facing the direction you want to go. These bird guys are really irritating too. They're so fast and they're really hard to jump on. So of course, it's best to try and avoid them instead of taking them out, but even that's hard to do because they shoot projectiles at you. Well, at least you have a way of knowing when enemies are nearby. Um, you know how Zelda games often have this music change when there's an enemy close by? Um, Bubsy does the same thing by adding a percussion track over the music. Oh my god, it's so annoying. It sounds like a buzzsaw drilling through sand or something, and it happens so frequently too. Every time you're near a woolly, which is more than half of the time, about as often as you're close to a Goomba in the original Super Mario Brothers. Can you imagine nails on a chalkboard every time you're by a Goomba? That's Bubsy 3D. The only feasible way to take out enemies, aside from jumping on their heads, is by grabbing an atom and shooting it at them. These are the collectibles in this game. If you get 50, you get a hit point, 100 for an extra life, um, 150 gets you another hit point, and 200 lets you play a bonus stage when you finish the level. Okay, so yeah, why don't we check out that bonus stage? Oh. Instead of just collecting the atoms, you can hold down the square button to pick it up and then launch it in any direction. You can take out enemies this way, and it's honestly a better way of doing it than jumping on their heads. I have to admit, really, it is kind of a nice idea to be able to use these collectibles for something other than just, you know, collecting. But of course, a good idea doesn't really mean much when you're Bubsy. Keep your arms and legs inside until this ride comes to a full and complete stop! And he never shuts up either. Out of every game in the series, this is the one with the most annoying voice. Rob Paulson was a lot easier on the ears, and I do like his new voice from the new game, but in Bubsy 3D, it was Lanny Manella who lent her voice. Um, she's played Rouge the Bat, Luke Triton, and she's had smaller roles in hundreds of games. She's a good voice actor, but the direction here? Well, I guess someone with a range as wide as hers, they were really able to get what they wanted out of her. Her, but man, what they wanted is so hard to listen to. Hey, what buttons did you press? And you just have to listen to it. He never stops talking. He just goes on and on and it's on and time. shut up! Now, if you lose a Bubsy, you'll start over here instead of at the beginning of the level. Ain't life grand? 
you could have just said, this is a checkpoint. But why do that when we could have an aimless banter that's annoying as hell? I swear to god, I'll never complain about Gex again after playing this game. I mean, there was a charm to Gex's stupid anecdotes and, you know, how he'd quote actual movies and stuff. At least there was something there you could hear and be like, yeah, I've heard that one, I know what one that's from. Did I even talk about the level design yet? Man, oh man, it is aimless as hell. Every level is a series of large open corridors separated by polygonal walls and a random assortment of generic floating platforms. I found myself getting lost in so many stages. The objective is simply to get to the end of the level, so I don't know why they decided to make it so open-ended. It's like they couldn't decide if they were making Crash Bandicoot or Mario 64, so they made Crash Bandicoot with Mario 64's level design, it doesn't work! And do I even need to touch up on the graphics? I mean, you can tell just by looking at it. This does not even look like a finished game. It looks like a testing room, grid flooring and all. There's no textures to the environment, it doesn't look like a place, just this video game limbo. And these are supposed to be themed areas too. Level 3 is supposed to be some mountains with a river flowing between them. Level 6 is supposed to be a factory so are the following stages, but you need more than just solid colors to convey that. You can't just put up some green walls and say, hey, we're in a forest. No, we're not in a forest. We're in a polygonal hell of plain green. There's a handful of set pieces that try to communicate this, like metal grates, vats of radioactive waste, but if it weren't for these tiny hidden details, you would have no idea what this place is supposed to be. Bubsy 3D is the true nowhere land. It doesn't take place anywhere. Architecture exists without rhyme or reason. I mean, take these floating platforms for example. A floating platform in a Mario game is like a block of wood or stone. It's a thing. It's made out of a material. It exists in a magical world, so you're able to look at it and just accept it. Yeah, sure, this makes sense for a floating object to be in this fantasy world, because I can look at it and be like, well, it's made out of a real world material, so I at least know what it is. But in Bubsy 3D, it's hardly even a shape. It's an unfinished asset that has no reason to exist. It's not made out of anything. It doesn't have a texture or material. I mean, like, do I wonder why there's floating question mark blocks in Mario? No, because they're things. I can look at them and I'm like, yeah, it's a question mark block. It has a name. It's a thing. It's made out of material. And I understand that Mario's universe has its own rules and I can respect that. But Bubsy has no rules. It's just purgatory and I'm trapped here there's actually some secrets in this game too. Yeah, I bet you didn't know about that. Sometimes you can find a telescope and it'll show you an area that's a little bit out of the way, but it never hints at how the hell you're supposed to get there. Usually it'll require jumping on a more out of the way platform that you might miss when walking by or something like that. These secrets sometimes have one-ups, but the main target in finding these are the rockets. Every level has two of them hidden in them and you'll have to get them all to get the true ending. So it's kinda like Mario 64, there's things to get in an open stage, but the goal is just to get to the end, so what's the point? This game can't decide what it wants to be. This is why I get lost so much in this game. I mean, sure, there's arrows to point the way, but even those only help so much. Actually, all they're really good for is making me realize I'm going backwards and that I have to turn back around. That's another problem, since this world has no deep detail, it's so easy to accidentally start backtracking while thinking you're going forward. The dizzying camera doesn't help with that either. Oh, you know what else this game has? Boss battles. I don't see anyone talk about these. The first one is this scientist guy in a UFO. You have to use your glide move to jump up on top of him. The second boss is a... Wooly Mammoth, oh, haha. -ha. You wait for him to attack and jump on him when he falls over. I must have done this 40 freaking times in a row and he would not die. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And it turns out what you really do is get him to slip on these banana peels and you gotta get him to run into the same part of the electrical fence, I, I think three times in a row before he falls off the stage into the pit. So if that's what you're supposed to do, why does it look like I'm doing damage when I jump on him? He gets 
get points? He has a damage animation? Why is this so misleading? Everything about this game is so inconsistent. I mean, when I'm playing a bad game, I'd like it to be at least something I can get through, but when things are changing this sporadically, I can hardly even keep up with it. I really don't understand why every level has a title card that parodies a movie. It made sense in Gex because the parodies were a constant thing throughout, even theming levels after different movies and genres, but there isn't a lick of that here, so I don't know why they even bothered. These levels are so inconsistent in length, too. Some of them are three minutes long, others can take half an hour. The water levels are pretty frustrating, but they're remarkably short in length. You might be underwater, but like other stages, it's still a big open area, and since you don't have to worry about platforming, you can just swim to the end goal. I don't understand. Why bother with all of this if you don't even have to go near any of it? And the longer levels are so grueling. Sometimes they're long because they're actually long stages, other times it's because they're brutally difficult, but this stage, level 16, it's both. Oh my god, the amount of accurate jumps you need to make in succession without dying, you have better chances of winning the damn lottery. The part that I really got hung up on is when you have to ride this bug across the water. There's a switch here you have to activate, but the bug runs underneath it, and if you just stay on the bug, you're gonna get pushed off into the water and you're gonna die. So what you have to do is jump off of the bug and land on top of this tiny little switch, jump back off of the switch, and land back on the moving bug. This is nearly impossible to do, and you have to do it twice in this stage. Platforming above water is an absolute nightmare. Falling off a ledge that's hovering over water locks you into this animation where Bubsy hovers in the air and waves goodbye before falling to his death. You know, the classic Wily Coyote, I get it, you're trying to be a cartoon, you're trying to be funny, but the practicality that this gang sacrifices is infuriating. If you get even remotely close to the the edge of a platform that's above water, you're locked into this death animation. So basically, with any platform that's above water, if you touch the edge, you die instantly. In any other game, you'd enter a free fall, right? You get a chance to land on a lower platform or grab the ledge. But no, not here. Not in Bubsy. It'd be like you're... It'd be like you're playing, um, it'd be like you're too upset to think of an analogy because you're wasting hours of your life playing this pile of shit! But hey, I finally did it. I got to the final stage. I'm almost done. I'm almost there. Let's do it. Oh my lord, the final level is this hallway of turrets. Yeah guys, why design a level when we can just put a million guns that shoot you as you try to run by? It's so hard to get past these things without taking damage. But once you get there, it's time for the final fight with the giant two-headed woolly. This is... Wow, this is easy. Just jump on these platforms and jump on his head three times. His only attack makes stuff fall from the ceiling, but as long as you're not on these platforms when he does it, you're good. Boss defeated. I did it. Yes, I... Huh? Wait. Oh, that's not the end. That's just halfway through the level. Okay, I guess I'll keep going. The next part looks really intimidating, but you can just walk around it. This death trap in the middle just guards an extra life, not worth getting. Around the corner on the right are three question marks. Grabbing the one at the bottom left gives you two lives, the other two hurt you. An easy grab, a much better alternative. Oh, this next room kills me. It's full of small woolies that can't fire projectiles, but they are fast, and you can't kill them either. They're completely invincible. You have to hit these four switches in the room in the right order. Green, blue, red, yellow. I don't even know how you're supposed to know that. I couldn't find anything in the stage that told me the order, or that there even was an order. I had to look it up. So, thank you, Insane Spyro one You saved the day. <laughs> After hitting the switches, you can warp to the final boss, the two Wooly Queens, and... Oh, of course, they shoot you to death. And now we have to do it all again. Cool. After so many retries, there was a point where I was able to get through these hallways without getting shot at. I found thinking of Bubsy as a car and trying to steer him around rather than trying to walk like a normal character really helped out. Alright, so here's how you beat the final boss. You gotta hit that switch in the middle of the room, which reveals four atoms on each corner of the arena. You then gotta go over, grab one, fire it at them, and rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. But between the relentless fire from the queens and how slow Bubsy 
turns around, this battle is near impossible to beat. I did figure out a great strategy though. What you gotta do is keep jumping, but wiggle your way to the center diagonally. Keep rocking the d-pad back and forth to dodge those projectiles. Once you hit the switch, jump back outside of the arena and try to steer yourself around to the back of an atom. But you gotta do that as fast as possible because the atom only lasts there for so long after hitting the switch. So go up, grab it from behind, and fire it at the queens. Doing it this way, and only in doing it this way, I was able to beat the queens and finish Bubsy 3D. The ending really sucks. The Woolies catch Bubsy and decide to invade the Earth, or something like that, I don't really care. To get the real ending, you have to collect every rocket in the game, and there's no way in hell I'm replaying all of these levels for them. Getting some of these are incredibly cryptic, too. You know how you get the one in the final stage? You gotta find and hit both of the hidden switches in the level, and they only give you question marks. It doesn't even tell you what they do, so you have no idea what you just triggered. Anyway, once you hit them both, you gotta backtrack all the way back through this maze of turrets to this wall right here. You gotta grab this atom, you can't collect it or you're screwed. You gotta grab the atom with the square button, fire it at the wall, and bam, hidden area. How the hell anybody was supposed to figure that out is beyond me. And I definitely wasn't gonna do this for the rest of the game too, so you know what I did? I cheated. I used a code to get all the rockets. Apparently there was a 99 lives code too. I can't believe I beat the game without that. Oh my lord, that would have been helpful. Anyway, with all of the rockets, Bubsy is now able to build a rocket out of the rockets and fly his way back home. But uh, apparently he entered a time rift or something, I don't know. He ends up in the Jurassic Age and now that he's not there to stop the Woolies, they still decide to invade the Earth. I got all the rockets, but the future refused to change. That's it. That's Bubsy 3D, beginning to end. I beat the whole game, everybody. I did it. <laughs> Worst thing I've ever put myself through. Oh my god, the amount of frustration I was experiencing while playing this game has never been matched. I mean, I've beat some pretty bad games before. I think when it comes to bad games, I can probably power through pretty much anything, but the amount of stress this game had me under is just... Jesus Christ! There is a two-player mode that's kinda interesting. You compete to get the most points, and at any point, the other player can tag in and take control. Each player only has a limited amount of times they can do that, so they have to time it just right, but again, what good is a good idea when the gameplay is still the train wreck that is Bubsy 3D? Literally, everything about this game sucks. The graphics hardly exist, the sound effects and music are grating, the controls are barely usable, the game Game's way too difficult because of it, Bubsy's annoying as hell, and your reward for all of your pain and suffering is a big fat middle finger of an ending. In fact, check out these mountains in the distance of this level. Yep, that sums up Bubsy 3D. Bubsy 3D is the worst game I've ever played, and I completed it, start to finish. I saw it through to the end, and now I'm gonna go hug my mom and cry.